Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. It's been a little while. I took about a week off from uh, from making videos and here I am. I'm back. I'm happy to be here. Hope you're doing well. And uh, I'm going to walk through my 10 favorite editing moves in Luminar Neo in this video. I'm going to use all 10 on the same photo. And then I have a bonus one, so it's kind of 11, but 10 sounds better. So there's a bonus uh, tip if you stick around to the end. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Let's go. Here's my base photo. It started life like that. I took this in Madeira um, back in May on the Luminar adventure there. It was fantastic. Uh, anyway, that was the base photo, and that was what I got to after using Develop Raw. Uh, I did some distortion correction, put on the highlights, lifted the shadows, pretty simple stuff, and then super contrast as well and uh, then a race and some straightening. So got some spots out, got some glare out, things like that, and now we're ready to go. So in the interest of time, of course, I skipped Develop Raw and Super Contrast in this video. I don't ever skip them in real life. Those are the first two things that I do. So you could kind of say those are my uh, also on the list of my favorite things, but uh, I think you get the point. Uh, the first thing I like to think about after making some basic light adjustments is uh, some detail adjustments, and that's for me a Structure AI. And this is move number one, and that is getting a linear gradient and using that on the foreground, uh, especially in a landscape. And I want to fade it into the photo because I feel like the stuff that's closer to me should be a little bit more kind of crunchy or detailed or structured. And the stuff that's a little further away should be less. So I'd use that fade and the linear gradient to accomplish that. And then I just pull this up to, in this case, I do about a 25 or 30. And it just gives a nice little pop to that foreground. So before and after, you'll notice it also does a little bit of brightening. Uh, and so that's uh, something to be aware of when you're using a Structure AI. Now, talking about Structure AI, I'm going to use it again. And this is another move that you've seen me do quite a bit, which is to soften up things like skies and water. Usually, I do that with like object select or a... Uh, like a linear gradient. This time I'm gonna do it with a luminosity mask. So this is kind of a combo tip because I love, love, like all caps love, luminosity mask. Uh, and in this case, the sky is mostly in the high, uh, or excuse me, uh, yeah, the sky is mostly highlights. And so I'm gonna come in and something maybe about like that, I need to kind of play with this a little bit. So maybe something about like that. It's basically covering the sky, a little bit of the water. I'm not trying to make the water real smooth. It's a single exposure. It was not a long exposure, so I'm not trying to, to do that. But this is move number two, which is softening things up with a luminosity mask. And so here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do like a negative 53. That sounds like a good round number. Uh, but before and after, if you look at the sky, for me, it's just it's something I like to do. It's personal preference, of course. But it just creates a little bit smoother, a little bit more dreamy. And when I have a landscape like this where there's nice color, nice light, nice shadow, I want to amp up kind of the dreaminess. And so uh, that's what I'm doing. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and copy this mask because I like that mask. It looks pretty awesome. If I show, you can see the mask. I'm going to use that again. So I'm going to click show to hide it. And then I'm going to click copy. So I can use it again here in a minute. I'm not going to use it right now. But I've got it copied and it will be the next mask that I need to paste, in which case it'll be hanging out there in my uh, kind of clipboard, if you will. Now, uh, option number three or uh, item tip number three is using object select. And that allows me to just do things so much easier and so much quicker than I used to do. And the things I want to do is grab some of these rocks that are right here in the path of the sunlight. And I just want to light them up a little bit. And I want to create a little bit more exposure there. So develop is great for that. Object select is great. You can see how quickly and easily and frankly accurately I'm grabbing those rocks. And I'm going to come over here to exposure. And all I want to do is pull that up a little bit. So like low 40s, something like that. But if you look at the before and the after, you can kind of see, I mean, the light is coming straight through kind of between these two rocks here. And that little... Um, line, for lack of a better word, it's kind of a line that leads your eye to the sun, is uh, I'm just lighting it up. And so object select and develop, absolutely fabulous thing to be doing. And I do that quite a bit and I, uh, I love it. Object select masking is just, uh, it is fantastic. Okay, tip number four or editing move number four is using Twilight Enhancer. But I don't just do it the regular way, of course. I got to do my own kind of custom thing. So I'm going to start with Golden. But as you'll see, as soon as that populates, it's way too much. So I'm pulling that down to about a 13. And my exposure is going to come up a little bit. I usually find that the default is a little heavy-handed for me in terms of the exposure slider in Twilight Enhancer. And I'm going to pull the tint up just a little bit. 
And over here on this area in Dawn, I'm gonna do that. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna mask that in, which is really what this tip is all about. Obviously, focus on controlling the different color elements and the light elements within Twilight Enhancer to get the look that you want. But consider masking because I don't really like what it does to the rocks. So I'm just gonna get a linear gradient and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna drop that in here. And as I do with all my gradients, I like to fade them. And so a generous fade like that. And now I've added a nice little warm kind of golden, which is the, the preset in Twilight Enhancer that I started with, kind of a golden look, but just to the sky. So if you look at the before and the after, adds a little tiny bit of mood and color to the sky, does not impact my foreground, which I did not want to impact in the first place. So Twilight Enhancer with the mask works so well. Okay, now tip number five is color harmony, and I love this tool. I talk about it all the time. It's fantastic. I'm going to do a little bit of brilliance and warmth, so like maybe a 13 or something like that. I'm going to take the warmth down, actually. I'm going to make it a little bit cooler. I'm not going to use split color warmth, but I am going to go in the midtones here in color balance, and I'm going to do, uh, go to about an 18 here on red and about a negative six on magenta. Uh, it's just obviously it's a color choice which means it's a personal preference like all this editing is but you know i don't really think it looks that good on the rocks well this is why i copied that luminosity mask earlier so i'm going to come into mask actions and i'm going to click paste and you will see that it goes away from the foreground because this luminosity mask is covering mostly just the sky so if i show you that mask boom there she is and the nice thing about it and a reason why not to use a linear gradient here is the linear gradient would cover up these rocks i don't want any color going into the rocks i'm fine with the rocks being kind of not exactly a silhouette i mean they're not that but they're kind of darker i don't really want to get any color on them plus the color coming from the sky is on the other side of the rock so i don't want to try to introduce any color but if you look at this color harmony just a little touch in those highlight areas this works really well so before and after, and I've kind of doubled down on that because I also did a Twilight Enhancer. So those two together, really powerful combo. This was a sunrise, but you know, basically uh, early morning, edge of the day light, and uh, just you get really, really beautiful colors. So that was tip number five, color harmony, but with a mask to control it, just to be specific and targeted. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna go to number six, which is using golden hour. And now you're probably thinking, hey, Jim, You've just done color twice in that sky. Like, how much are you going to do, Jim? Because you also talk in your videos, Jim, about not doing too much color and not too many color tools. And you're right, I do. And that is why I'm going to mask this. And instead of masking it into the sky, I'm actually going to mask it into the foreground uh, because I like the kind of glow it puts on the rocks. Uh, but I don't want to mess with the colors in the sky because I already got that kind of, maybe not perfect, but perfect to my taste for this photo. So this time, I just wanted to warm up the rocks a little bit a little bit of that golden hour hitting those rocks. So before and after, it's a 30 foreground only with a linear gradient, nice and smooth. And so that's another tip. And that was number six, and that's golden hour with a mask to make sure you apply it just to certain parts of the photo. And now that I've done that, while we're on color, I'm gonna go to the color tool, and this is tip number seven, and that is do not hesitate to use HSL. It is really the best, uh, color tool for you know messing around for like for a better term with individual colors um, if they're separated pretty well if there's yellow or orange or green or blue on all over the photo then you got to do, do masks in this case i don't really um need to do a mask because it's uh, i'm just kind of playing with a little bit of these specific colors which are fairly separate and distinct from each other so i'm going to start with the hue of the green and i'm going to go to about a 10 or 12 and so i'm just adding a little bit making it a little bit greener, the, the green rocks, but I wanna take the saturation down because it is getting a little intense. And remember, I hit it with golden hour, which gave it a little bit of pop of color. So I'm gonna pull that color saturation down, like negative 13, but I made it more green. Uh, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go into luminance. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna brighten up the yellows and the greens. So the yellow is gonna go like a 12 or 15, and the green is gonna go about a 20. So something about like that, it's kind of brightened up the foreground shifted the color slightly and desaturated it a tiny bit. So before and after. So it's brighter, which is good because that plays into the sun coming in and hitting it as it rises over that C stack over there. So that's tip seven is HSL really gives you great control. And in this case, I did not have to mask it. 
uh, because the yellow and the green that I played with, the yellow did not impact really the yellows in the sky. Sometimes you will need to mask it, so just be aware of that. Uh, tip number eight is when I like to use uh, certain tools to add mood, one of my favorites is mystical, and I just think it does a great job. And for photos like this where it's kind of you know mystical looking already, I think it's a, it's a great tool. I'm gonna apply it across the entire photo. It's rare that I mask mystical. I do sometimes, but I don't feel the need to in this case. So if you look at the before and the after, it creates a little bit softer, slightly brighter sky, a little bit moodier foreground, a little bit more shadow before and after, but I think it enhances kind of that magical early morning kind of feel to the photo. That's one of the reasons I love mystical. That's why it's number eight on the list. Now, speaking of making things look kind of mystical and magical, Glow is a great tool, and this is tip number nine. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to get Orton Effect Soft, and I'm going to do about a 15. Now, the thing is, is I don't like it everywhere. So you're probably thinking, hey, Jim, you still have that luminosity mask copied. And I do, and I'm going to apply that. So up, oh, not advanced settings, go into masking, and click in here and click paste. Now, when I do that, it's applying it, of course, where the luminosity mask is defaulting to, which is the sky. In other words, if you recall from the luminosity mask, it's pretty much all the way to the right. Um, in this case, I actually want the opposite. So I'm just going to click invert. So this tip, uh, using glow to add a little bit of mood and kind of that magical look, and then applying it to some of these darker shadow areas, gives me a pretty interesting look before and after. Slightly brightens it, slightly softens it, but I just, I like the overall look. I just think it's uh, kind of fantastic. Now, by the way, if you haven't yet picked up my new ebook that's all about quick start, uh, it's a quick start editing guide to Luminar Neo, there's a link down below. It's a free ebook, it's 27 pages of tips, tricks, ideas, things like that. Feel free to check it out at the link down below. Again, totally free if you want it. Uh, and if you don't, that's cool. Uh, you can just hang out here and watch my videos. I'm happy either way. Uh, that, uh, that was tip number nine, glow. And what I want to do now is go into, this is one of my favorite tips. In fact, it's so favorite. I made a video just about this tip, and that is using Accent AI with a luminosity mask. And that's because it just gives you so much great control. If you see what I did there, I went to 25. It's applying across the entire photo. It's way too much. I don't like it in the foreground. It makes it way too, it's getting to be like this neon green over the top. And so I'm going to go back and use that same mask. So paste, and it goes away from the foreground because remember that mask is mostly just in the sky. So all I'm doing is just giving a little bit of oomph to the sky. And so before and after. Now this tip for Accent AI used with a luminosity mask, I will often do it in uh, just the midtones with a little bit of a generous fade. In this case, I wanted to stick with just the highlights. I think it does a little bit of contrast, a little bit of pop to the sky. So before and after, but I will often use it across the midtones to give a kind of final pop to a photo. Anyway, that was tip number 10. Now, I said there's a bonus tip, and there is. First, I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette, and that vignette is going to come in something about like that with it maybe a tiny, tiny bit of inner light. I love vignettes. I don't need to choose a subject. It's defaulting to right in the middle. There's before and after. I like that, but feathering is your friend, I think, when you're using a vignette. So I like to go with a usually 100 on feathering just to kind of be really smooth and kind of, uh, what's the term, a gentle fade right along the edges, feather, essentially. So before and after. So the bonus tip here is um, at the end of my edit, a lot of time, even after I've done the vignette, which you just saw, I like to go back to develop and sometimes make a few additional changes. And that would be maybe playing with contrast or highlights or shadows, things like that. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to mess with any of the uh, other parts of the photo except one little thing, and that is going to be me getting a linear gradient right here. And what I want to do is I want to make a pretty generous fade. I mean, actually, really generous fade. And I want to scoot this linear gradient pretty far down here. And that's because I don't want it to bleed too much up into the top part of the photo. And if you didn't notice, you can drag your linear gradients off of the screen like that so that you can really get a generous, uh, a really light application of this if you want. Or, you know, if you want more, of course, you can raise it. I'm going to go pretty light. So, you know, maybe something about, uh, maybe a tiny bit higher, maybe something about like that. And all I want to do is, I felt like the vignette wasn't enough and it's a little too bright down there. So I'm just going to start dropping that exposure just to darken that foreground, just to help the viewer kind of focus on 
this part right here of this rock and that rock, the ones I lit up, but of course when I selected it, it lit up the whole rock, of course. Um, but I'm just focused really, land your eye there and follow it to the sun and then look at the sky and the color and that sort of thing. And so that's really what this tip is, is don't hesitate to come back at the end and make further light adjustments. I always talk about adjusting the light in the beginning, which I do, but I tend to adjust the light kind of throughout the edit. And many times at the end of my edit, I'm adjusting light for a final time. And in this case, it's just giving me the ability to control that foreground. So if you look at it there, now I look at it, I'm like, ah, it's so bright. Uh, now with the uh, that linear gradient and that uh, de decrease in exposure, it's just so much better, so much more subtle. And it really, I think, lands your eye right here, which is really the part I want you to start on. You can still see plenty here, so it's not like it's black uh, and you have no idea what's going on. There's enough there, but before that, it was bright. It was lit up. I don't want it lit up. And so that was the bonus tip, uh, coming back at the very end, possibly with a mask. Sometimes just overall, I use develop at the end just for contrast, highlights, and shadows adjustments, just to fine tune some things. And even sometimes when I'm doing that, I will also play with temperature and tint just a little bit, just to maybe fine tune things again. And sometimes it feels like that temperature and tint adjustment help kind of wrap it all together, especially if, like in this photo, you've masked different color tools into different areas. I don't feel like I need to play with the temperature and tint. I like it the way it is, but something to think about. So on that last use of develop, think about that if your photo needs it. That's the full workflow, my friend. That is 10 tips plus a bonus tip of uh, kind of my favorite moves, uh, editing moves or editing tips in Luminar Neo. But as you can see, you can take a photo that out of the camera, pretty flat, of course it's a raw file, right? And um, not very uh, pop, and not much pop, and now pretty much came alive. And so uh, the before and after is pretty substantial. And honestly, it looked a lot more like my final result because you know our eyes obviously see a lot better than our cameras do. And I mean, it was a magical, beautiful, colorful sunrise. I was happy to be there shooting it. Those are 10 plus one, so 11 tips on how to get uh, you know impactful results and uh, things I like to do to get there. Hope that's given you some ideas. Check out that free ebook if you're interested, and I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.